On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, it's the Bonham Richard Fire Investigation, Part 1, The Timeline. I'm your host, Sal Mercaglano. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. If you're new to the channel, take a second, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, so this is a video I've been working on for almost six months now, on and off. And to tell you the truth, I, I started it. I didn't want to finish it. And I left it out there because I was very leery of commenting on the Bonham Richard fire. I went on a podcast, the Bilge Punts podcast back in, I think it was back in October after the report came out. And I commented on it with Alex and Jamie Drack wasn't on the Bilge Pumps. And, you know, I felt like that was good. I got out there. I said what I wanted to say about the report and that was it. But in April, the Navy released a report, which I have right here, on the issue regarding fireboats and the use of fireboats in the Bonham Richard fire. And I'm not going to lie, it pushed me over the edge. It literally <laughs> pushed me over the edge. And I said, the hell with it. I'm going to do this video. I'm going to put it out there. And if you want to bash and attack me, that's fine. But this fire needs to be critiqued in a certain way that I don't think it's being critiqued. So let me go back for a second here. So before I started what's going on with shipping back in March of last year with the Ever Given, back in July of 2020, when the Bonham Richard fire happened, I put a couple of videos up and I'll link them up here to you. Analysis of the fire as it was ongoing. And I got some good hits, you know, while people were watching it and viewing it. And I was basically critiquing on what was going on during the fire. And I didn't follow up really with it at all. It was just a little bit of a thing I was doing. It was, it was the beginning of COVID. I was sitting at home doing nothing over the summer. So I did that. Uh, but I did comment on it with some news media outlets. And let me give you a little background with this, because I usually don't do this. I don't like to give my bio, but I'm going to give you my bio here because I know what's going to happen here. I'm going to critique this fire and I'm going to get backlash by people regarding my lack of being in the U.S. Navy. Now, let me be first clear before we go any further with this video. This is not a criticism, a critique of those who fought the fire on board the ship. Let me be clear. Anybody who dons a firefighting gear and goes in and fights the big bad red stuff has my huge admiration and respect and salute. This is not a critique of the firefighters who risk their lives going on board to fight this fire. They have my utmost admiration. So let's be clear about that before we go a second further on this video. Myself, I sailed for seven years with the Military Seal of Command. Uh, Military Seal of Command employs merchant mariners to sail Navy vessels. One fifth out of the U.S. Navy is manned by merchant mariners. And as a merchant mariner in the employee of the U.S. Navy, I attended the basic and advanced firefighting school. I did damage control school. So I did all the firefighting and damage control that Navy personnel would normally do. Add to it, since 1999, I've been a firefighter. I was a, um, I was a paid firefighter for two years, elevated up to the position of lieutenant, while I was working my way through college as a graduate, when I finished my uh, graduate classes and I was writing my dissertation, I worked for two years full-time as a firefighter. And I've been a volunteer firefighter since 1999. I train firefighters. Uh, I pump fire trucks. I train how to, how to pump fire trucks. I've gone into fires. I was in a fire the other day. Uh, I've been doing that now since you know 23 years. I'm a captain on my fire department. I've been a captain for 15 years. So I, I, I come into this with a very unique I think, perspective. Uh, I, I have practical experience, both ship and shore. Uh, I have also, as a maritime historian, have studied damage control throughout World War II, World War I, and up to the present day. I've read all the books on, on, on the ship's captains who were on Sam, Samuel B. Roberts, on the Stark, on coal. Uh, I've studied the damage done to ships like McCain and Fitzgerald throughout the years, Tripoli, Princeton, you name it. So I'm pretty well abreast of this information. Am I the ultimate expert on it? <laughs> no, by any means. Uh, will I get things wrong in this video? Probably so. And you're free to critique it. Uh, the problem I have is that nobody's critiquing this. Nobody's putting anything out there to question the number of reports that are coming out from the Navy on this fire and highlighting the absolute insanity that was this fire. Because let me be clear about several things. 
in October, the Jagman investigation came out on this over 400 pages. And I've read this thing extensively. And every time I turned a page in that report, I kept thinking it couldn't get any worse. And then you turn the page and it got worse. And it got worse all the time to the point that it made me almost do this video, but I didn't. So, but what has kicked me over the edge here is this one on fire boats, because that's a pet peeve of mine that they lacked in this fire. So what this video is going to do is the following. So number one, I'm going to do a recap of the fire, a kind of a timeline of the fire. Now, what we're just looking at is the period from the initial ignition on board the vessel to the explosion that took place on board that really was the end of the vessel, so to speak. Now, the fire went on for another four and a half days, but we're just focusing on that initial period. So we're going to do a timeline of that. I'm going to go look at the four major areas that the Jagman report critiques in the next part. And then the last part, I want to go back to that fireboat issue because I think it's really important and, and it highlights how the Navy is failing to look at this issue in a very objective manner. So let's go ahead and first look at the information that's out there on it right now, and then we're going to go into the fire. So I'll have all this information available to you out there for you to look at. So this is the latest report that was done on the fireboats. Again, a whopping nine pages. And to tell you the truth, it's a page and a quarter. And I'll come back to this of why this is important in the end. The other documents that were released are this. This is the Jagman investigation that was done. This is the first endorsement done by Admiral Lesher, uh, who is the vice chief of naval operations. Yes, but here is the full report. And as I mentioned to you before, it's an extensive report. And I'm going to be citing this throughout. The other document that was released concurrently with this was this document here and called the Major Fires Review. This was released by the Pacific Fleet and looked at 15 fires that have taken place on board U.S. Navy ships and what should have been learned over the past roughly 20 years. So each of these are really important. The other issues here, obviously, is this issue right here, and this is the latest information from USNI. Sailor arraigned on arson hazarding vessel charge in Bonham Richard fire. This E-1 uh, seaman recruit Ryan Mays has been identified as the person who potentially started the fire on board the Bonhomme Richard. I'm not going to focus on the arson because to tell you the truth, whether this was started by arson or whether it was caused by an accident down in the lower V hole, which we'll talk about, it doesn't really matter. I'm looking at the response to the fire and to tell you the truth. If this was arson, it wasn't very good arson because it took over an hour and a half of this fire really to get out of control. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So a little bit about the geography of Bonham Richard. So Bonham Richard was a WASP class LHD, uh, LHD number six. And the fire took place in what was called the lower V or lower vehicle deck. And this ship, sh this shows you an image of her on fire and it shows you a schematic, which I'll show you a little more detail here in a minute. But basically the area of the fire is this kind of dotted in area down here. That is the lower vehicle deck. To understand an LHD, it, it, it's actually a, a series of vessels. So the forward half here, you know, basically from here forward is all berthing and crewing spaces. So it's kind of like a troop ship. Uh, this lower vehicle deck and the deck just above it, you can see the side port and the side port on the port side is going to be really important here for our story. This is the upper vehicle deck. So this is these two decks would hold, as it tells in the name of it, vehicles and equipment that would be used for staging ashore. And the way you get those vehicles ashore is by two ways. One, you would proceed now right down here, just after this red dotted in box, this is the engine room down here. But then at the very stern of the vessel, this is the well deck area. You see the landing craft well. This is where the air cushion and landing craft come in. And if you go up the landing craft well deck, it takes you up here to the upper V deck, and then you descend down to the lower V deck. If you come from the upper V deck up, you're on the, the hangar deck, and you see the large openings here. This is the hangar deck. That's the starboard side elevator. The port side elevator will be roughly about here on the left side. The port side is to the pier. The starboard side, the right side, is toward the bay. And the port side elevator was the main entrance into the vessels where the gangway was attached. And this is where you basically see it. Now, down in the lower V deck, and this is from the report, 
is the uh, this is a, a schematic of what was inside the lower V deck. Uh, a lot of ancillary equipment, forklifts, uh, carts, and, and 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 heaters, and and just loose gear. Now remember, underway this vessel, this this deck would be packed with vehicles loaded with fuel and ammunition potentially. So here you just have a lot of equipment that's left over. The ship had just come out of a shipyard period, uh, NASCO. And so the ship was back in commission. It had been turned back over to the crew and on board the vessel was a watch section. Now this is Sunday, July 12th. A watch section of about 150 personnel were on board, roughly of the thousand person crew. They divided into six slices and this watch section had the duty. And the fire is believed to have started down here somewhere on the starboard side, which would be the lower side here of the image. And the fire was initially believed to start there. Go in here a little bit more. This is the internal layup of the vessel. You'll see here, here's the lower V deck. This is where the ATF determined the origin of the fire. You'll see right above it is the upper vehicle deck. There's a ramp on the port side. The ramp on the port side comes up here. There's a side brow right here. This is one of the side brows we're going to talk about, this entrance to the side of the vessel. There's also a ramp that takes you up to the hangar deck. The hangar deck and the port elevator, this is where the other gangway is. This is the main gangway. And this becomes very important. If you're on the upper V deck, you can either go up to the hangar deck or you can go aft and down into the well deck. And the well deck here, as you see, Right down here, the well deck did not have a ramp going off the stern platform. So there was no way to get from the pier onto the stern platform. That becomes very important. This is a little bit more of a detailed schematic. The fire is believed to have started again here in the lower V deck. And what happens is that fire grows in intensity. It hits the lower V deck. It heads to the upper V deck. It eventually gets into birthing compartments and areas above the area, a lot of medical spaces and shops are above the upper V deck. And then the fire will run the hangar deck up into the forward uh, part of the island structure. That's the communication area. And then it just runs the entire vessel. So that's kind of the overarching schematic and diagram of the vessel. So let's get into how this fire developed and what exactly happened that morning. So this timeline comes right out of the report, page 375, Appendix D. And then I've also included information in here from throughout the report, particularly the executive summary and some key sections in the fire. Now, one of the things to be thinking about as we go on here, there are four key areas that they focused on that we're going to come back to that were basically contributed to this fire. One was the material condition of the vessel, basically the, the very poor material condition of the ship. It had been degraded and there were issues about the vessel since it was just coming out of a shipyard period. Second, the training and readiness of the crew will come into issue here. Three, the shore establishment support, the support given to the Bonhomme Richard from shore-based assets and four is oversight command and control which i will argue is one of the big overarching issues at play here so let's run through this timeline and talk about this so at 0800 we're going to use military time here so this is again this is 12 july 2020 beautiful day in san diego at 0800 a crew member on the upper v deck notices some mist or fog down in the lower V deck. This crewman was on the way to a snack machine, a vending machine on the upper V deck, notes it, but doesn't do anything about it, which right from the beginning is, is, is a huge problem. It's like, wh why wouldn't you not do something about this? Uh, 0810, smoke is observed. There's a report now of not just fog, but smoke coming out of the lower V deck. And this is the first instance we have of the recording of, of smoke uh, being uh, on the ship. At 0816, the officer of the deck ordered a seaman to go down and investigate the lower V deck. Uh, that seaman returns and yells for the OOD to call away fire, that, that there's fire on board. Now, the now understand the command structure of a vessel. 
the command structure is overall in charge. You have the command duty officer. The command duty officer is in charge of all aspects of the vessel. The OOD is in charge of the deck, basically the, the, the moorings and, and the kind of the to, going to and from the vessel. You have an engineering watch. You'll have a, a, a teams in, in other key areas of the vessel, damage control, communications, uh, you name it, throughout the vessel. So this call goes out for the uh, yell for fire to be announced. Now, the OOD could have sounded this, but instead, the OOD contacts DC Central, Damage Control Central, to call it away. The Damage Control Center calls it away. They get on what's called the public hailing system, the PA system, or what the Navy calls the 1MC, and announces the fire. The problem is because the ship is in a maintenance period, the 1MC in the damage control center is not hooked up. So when they grab the mic and key, you know, away fire teams, nothing goes out. Now, it's also clear that no alarm is sounded at this point, which should have been sounded. But at 820, after a few minutes, the OD calls DC Central to inquire about this. Hey, why have you not sounded off fire stations? And this becomes a beginning of a myriad of issues of communication problems on board this ship. Between 823 and 832, there are unsuccessful attempts to get into the lower V. They basically send down crew members to go assess and ascertain where exactly this fire is. And they are never able to get a good, firm control of that. We see that they basically do not know what exactly is on fire in the lower V, and they're not able to get it. Now, understand, this is 30 minutes into the initial smoke report, 20 minutes since smoke has been observed, 15 minutes since there's been a call away for fire. And we still don't have instances here where we're seeing the issue of whether or not the work is being done to get these crews fitted out to uh, start preparing to fight this fire. And we're gonna come back to that because there are multiple issues here at play. Next, the command duty officer arrives on the hangar deck from his, his cabin and notes that he has texted the CO and the XO about the situation. Okay. I, I have to stop at that one for just a second here. You texted the CO, the commanding officer, that his ship is on fire. I so much want, now listen, I, I don't mean to be glib about any of this, but a fire on a ship is the most severe issue that a ship faces. That's it, period. I, I mean, it's, it, it is it. It's life-threatening. Yet your response was to text the captain that I would die to see that text. I want to know what that text was that the command duty officer sent it to him. Dear captain, hope your Sunday's going good. Ship on fire, frowny emoji. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I just don't know. But that concept of texting the captain, what if he didn't see the text? What if he didn't acknowledge the text? I, I, I mean, seriously, if anything deserves a phone call to the ship's captain, it's your ship is on fire and you need to come back. I, I just, again, I, I'm just, I, was, I was floored by that when I read that, and I'm still, to this day, two years later, floored by that comment. All right, back to the narrative here and the timeline. So after the CDO arrives on, at 826, Federal Fire was dispatched. Now, Federal Fire is the fire department on the base at San Diego. All Navy bases have Federal Fire Departments on them. And these are civil servants who are in the ploy of the federal government who work as firefighters. And this is the, the fire department that is based on the base. They don't have to come off. They should have a good operating relationship with the Navy. Now, it's important to note here that Fed Fire wasn't dispatched by the Bonham Richard. The Bonham Richard never contacts shore establishment to report a fire. This is picked up on a radio transmission that's coming through the base of the observation of smoke emanating from the Bonham Richard. And it was due to some person working in an office who realized I'm dispatching federal fire to Pier 2 for the fire on board Bonham Richard. Whoever that person is, she had a friggin' medal right there, in my opinion, because she's going, or she or he is dispatched fed fire 
to this position. Fed Fire arrives in three minutes. Three minutes, they arrive on Pier 2 and they proceed up the gangway to the port aircraft elevator. And the, the port ACE, which is the aircraft elevator, is the main way. Now understand, this is several, you have to climb a huge scaffold about four stories up to get to this. And the initial arrival of Fed Fire, which was engine 16 arrives, they climb up this scaffolding to report to the command duty officer. Now the way a fire is supposed to be fought on a ship is the ship's crew fights the fire and then they are going to be backed up by mutual aid coming in. in. In this case, federal fire and then other fire units coming in either from uh, uh, the city of San Diego, National City, or other ships providing firefighting crews. And Fed Fire reports for basically an assignment. What do you want us to do? At 8.33, two sailors are sent out again to investigate. And at this point, they are beginning to fit out firefighting teams. Now, one of the issues that comes up in the midst of this is whether or not the firefighting teams can wear their NWUs, their camouflaged Navy uniforms under their firefighting gear, or else will it melt and it's a problem. Now, understand the whole reason the Navy went from blueberries to NWUs was the issue of blueberries melting. And the fact that these crew members don't know this is a huge problem. Have you not been training firefighting at this point, every firefighter should have seen the Forestal Fire video. Every firefighter should have seen what happens on board a ship when fire wrecks havoc to it. And remember, on the Forestal Fire, the initial detonations wiped out most of the primary damage control teams. And so secondary teams had to come fight. It's why the Navy advocates every sailor a damage controlman, a firefighter. So again, this fight is going on on at 838, teams eventually descend into the upper V. So we're finally beginning to see the, 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 the introduction here of teams heading into the upper V deck. And again, they're heading down to determine the location of the fire and then to begin to fight the fire. The problem that Bonham Richard has in this period of time, and it's a significant one, and it's one that needs to be noted throughout this, this entire debate is that the Bonham Richard is in a critical deficiency to fight a fire. If you look at this ship, this ship is not prepared to fight a major fire. To give you the indication here, out of 216 fire stations on board the vessel, 187 of them, 87.5% are out of service. So just to find a working fire station with a hose is going to be a chore for these firefighters. And I'm going to come back and talk about that in a minute. At 847, again, Fed Fire arrived at 829. So this is, uh, again, we're looking at 18 minutes. Engine 16 lays a hose up to the aircraft elevator to the lower V. Now, this is a massive problem. Can I be clear? Again, I come back to this being a firefighter. Fire trucks carry combat hose. They fire, you know, what, they, what we call our pre-connects. These are our attack hoses. They are anywhere from 200 to 300 feet long, depending on the, on the trucks. That's it. Uh, that's what you have. If you go longer than 200 and 300 feet with an inch and three quarter hose, that's the primary attack hose. Inch and three quarter uh, diameter, it can flow 125 gallons of water per minute. If you go further than that, you get into issues with friction loss in your hose. And what you need to do is lay large diameter hose that distance and then hook your smaller diameter hose into it. It's all fluid dynamics. Uh, but what they're doing now is laying hose from their engine up this gangway, up three, four stories to the hangar deck. And then they're gonna have to run from the hangar deck down to the upper V to the lower V. They do not have enough hose for this. Let me be clear. They're gonna to need to run additional hose here to do this. And what they should have done is hooked into the ship's firefighting system, use the fire mains on the ship and use the ship's equipment. But there are two reasons they don't do that. Number one, again, go back to the issue, 87.5% of the fire systems on board Bonham Richard are out of service. The other reason, which is just absolutely mind blowing to me, is that the federal fires hoses are not compatible with the Navy firefighting system. 
In other words, the threads on their hoses don't match the threads on the firefighting um, nozzles or, or uh, extensions on the Bonham Richard, and they don't have adapters. Why they don't have adapters, I have no friggin' clue, but they don't. And that is just, how they don't have a bag of adapters on their truck, I don't know. I, I mean, how this has not come up before the Bonham Richard catches fire that the standard fire thread is incompatible with the Navy thread, which by the way, everybody knows that. It's not a surprise. Everybody knows this friggin' thing. And yet they show up there and their hose can't match in and which is fine. All you need is an adapter for it, but they don't have the adapter. I, I'm just friggin' floored by that. I, I gotta tell you that over and over again, how friggin' floored I am by it. All right, next, the Bonham Richard team at 848 descends the upper V to locate fire stations. All right, again, one of the big issues that the Navy will continually say about this is that the Bonham Richard was in a maintenance repair period and therefore was ill-equipped to fight the fire. Great, you have damage control officers, you have damage control teams. One of the things that they should have been doing during the days is figuring out which hoses are out of service and which ones are in service. And the reason you wanna identify what are in service so that you know that you have to lay hose from these fire stations could be a long distance to get to fires. You can't sit there and hope, oh, let's just hope there's not gonna be a fire because guess what? When there is a fire, you find yourself doing this. They continually go down to find different hoses and they find the stations closest to the upper V and lower V out of service because no one seems to know where there's a serviceable fire station on this vessel, let alone hose to attach to it. Because in some cases they do find fire stations, but the hose is out of service. It's been cut or damaged. Next, 853, engine 16 withdraws due to low air. So it's going to take time to lay your hose out to get to this fire. So it's not surprising that firefighters and what you wear is your self-contained breathing apparatuses, your SCBAs. SCBAs only last for about 30 minutes, depending on the amount of work you're doing. If you're in really good shape and you wear SCBAs a lot, you can stretch it longer than that. But if you are you know, hustling and doing a huge amount of work, you're gonna burn through an air bottle pretty quick. And understand these engines only have one crew on board, You know, basically three to four firefighters and that's it. And so they have to withdraw out at this point. At 0900, the San Diego Fire Department arrives on Pier 2. So they triggered a, uh, a, a second and third alarm here, which Im immediately triggers mutual aid, what we call in the, in the fire service. So San Diego, National City Fire Department, I believe there's one other one that begin to respond. Now, a note about the firefighters here. Let's, let's talk about difference in firefighters. So San Diego Fire Department has little to no experience fighting on board vessels. Fed fire should be the group that would be the supplement to that. So San Diego should supplement into Fed fire. Fed fire should be supplementing the Bonham Richard's crews at this moment. That doesn't happen. And matter of fact, what we see happening here is a complete breakdown of that. Plus, I would mention that while Navy crews are well trained to fight fires, they have very little practical experience fighting fires. Yeah, I know the fire trainers and I've been in the fire trainers and I've seen the new fire trainers. They're great. But let me be clear about a fire trainer. Number one, you know, it's a trainer. Number two, there's like almost no smoke in a trainer most of the time and not real smoke that's in there. Uh, real firefighters aren't like Station 19, 911, Chicago Fire. If you want to know what a fire is, you know, just close your eyes and, and that's a fire. It's black. You can't see anything. San Diego Fire Department has experience fighting fires. Do they have experience fighting ship fires? No, probably not as much, but they are trained on, on skyscraper fires. And skyscraper fires, large structure fires are very similar. You've got to deal with extension. You got to deal with ventilation. You got to deal with power. You got to deal with all those things that you typically deal with on board ships. And so a large steel and glass enclosed structure operates in very similar ways to the way a ship does. And the San Diego Fire Department should be bringing in your experienced firefighters, supplementing your firefighters from Fed Fire and on board ship who have experience. I should also note that we start seeing the arrival of teams from other vessels right across the pier from Bonham Richard is the Russell and the Fitzgerald. They send over a nine person and a seven person team to help. 
they come on board fully outfitted with their gear, ready to fight fire, and they sit in the hangar deck and are never used by the command duty officer and the OD. They just don't use them for some reason I have yet to figure out. They tend not to use them. All right, let's keep trucking along here. Nine oh five, truck seventeen relieves engine sixteen and descends to the lower V and then withdraws. So, the the backup engine to engine sixteen was truck seventeen, and so there was a couple of reasons why this truck is a little slower getting in here. And let me talk about this. One of the craziest things about this fire is the lack of water to fight this fire. There is no hydrants on Pier 2 at the San Diego Navy base. And from what I understand from talking to people at San Diego, there's no water on any of the piers. There is a potable water station, which provides drinking water, which was 400 gallons per minute, which provided drinking water to Bonham Richard, to Russell and Fitzgerald. Understand, for a large structure fire, you have gauges of how much water you need. The largest structure fires require at least 2,500 gallons per minute. The potable water station on the pier provides 400 gallons of water. And so what truck 17 had to do was lay in a line, a large diameter hose from a hydrant in the parking lot to engine 16. So they had water to the truck because the trucks only carry anywhere from 500 to 1,000 gallons of water. And so they needed to have a water supply, but even that water supply is not going to be enough. That's only going to be a thousand gallons. What is consistently clear here is there's never enough water to fight this fire. The Bonham Richard can't get, there's never any water sprayed from the Bonham Richard on this fire. They never get a fire station in service on the ship. All the firefighting comes from ships. I mean, it comes from fire trucks on the pier. What's interesting to note to me, and we'll come back to this, is why there's no water on this pier. But again, we'll get back to that when we do the analysis. 019, engine 12 relieves truck 17 on the upper V. So you're replacing, you're swapping out your crews here, running through this. Now, again, these are just the crews from the fed fire. When San Diego arrives, they show up on the gangway. They go up the, the, the gangway up onto the flight deck and they're told by the Fed fire to go back to your trucks and stand by. We don't want you up here, just stand by. And so they don't even take make use of the San Diego Fire Department and the other fire departments as they come in. At uh, 9.25, the San Diego Fire Department sees that just forward on the port side is this side port ramp. And the side port door is open and so the San Diego Fire Department on their own freelancing here basically starts sending crews into what is the upper V deck. Understand, up to this point, all the firefighting effort had been coming down the hangar deck, down the ramp onto the upper V deck, and then through the upper V deck trying to get to the lower V deck. San Diego Fire avoids having to go up four flights and then down. They just go straight in on the port side through the side port door and says, listen, we're right here on the upper V. We should be fighting the fire from here. But as we'll find out, the San Diego Fire Department pulls back because there's pallets on the deck and they're not sure what the condition of the deck is. They're not sure if there's holes in the deck and they don't want to send firefighters in in reduced visibility. At 930, engine 12 backs out due to low air. Now, again, you should be keeping track of this if you're fighting an interior structure with relief teams on scene to replace it so that you're not pulling crews back and then having to send new crews in, they should be relieving in place as this goes on. At 9.30, the fire department assumed control of firefighting efforts. This is an amazing event. I got I to gotta be clear about this. Let me pop out of this for a second. Okay. At 9.30, this command duty officer and the CO who eventually arrives on scene, he comes a little bit later, it hands this over to Fed Fire and said, this is your fire. You fight the fire. We will do whatever you need to support it, but you're in charge of this fire. They abrogated, they, they surrendered their vessel. They have surrendered. The motto of the Bonhomme Richard, I have not yet begun to fight, yet they're handing over to Fed Fire the, the fire. That's not the role for Fed Fire. Fed Fire is a supporting agency. They're mutual aid. They're coming in. You just don't turn it over. Number one, Fed Fire does not have 
the knowledge of this vessel. And let me be clear about that too. That's criminal too. How does Fed Fire not know the interior layout of these vessels? I'm in a rural fire department, rural fire department in North Carolina. I have an iPad in all my fire trucks that have schematics for all the major buildings in it. If I go to a, a warehouse fire, if I go to a business fire, I can, with a pop of a button, pop it up. And actually it pops up automatically on mine and, and look at the layout. I, I know the exact layout. Now, they don't even have the schematics from this. And that's, this is where you want your damage control on board Bonham Richard directing this. However, the problem they have is Number one, the damage control doesn't have communications with anyone because they don't have radios. None of their radios are working. The repeater system, whatever, is out. So there's no radio communication. Matter of fact, they talk in the report that communications was being done by phones. Phones, not by radios. Oh, and I should also mention, too, <coughs> that Fedfire and San Diego Fire, their radios don't match. So they can't communicate to each other. I, again, I, I'm just floored by this all the time. So at 931, San Diego Fire Department was directed to depart the hangar by Fed Fire. So again, this is what they're doing. They're sending the San Diego Fire Department off. They're not sending them, by the way, to go fight the fire through the, the, the closer access side port. They're just clearing them off the hangar deck. And so San Diego Fire Department basically goes to the pier. And what you eventually see set up here are three different commands, San Diego fire, Fed fire, and then the Bonham Richard. I, I mean, the absolute worst case scenario here. At 933, engine 19 relieves engine 12. And it's at that point that the San Diego fire department, they find fire in the upper V. So understand what this means. It's 933. Fog was noticed at 0800, smoke observed at 1810, and 816 fire called. This is an hour and 15 minutes from the very latest that they are now just finding the fire. And more importantly, the fire has extended now to the upper V-deck, which means the fire in the lower V-deck is out of control and is now breached up into the upper V-deck. And again, hour and a half almost and no water on this fire yet. 939, San Diego Fire and Engine 19 both pull back. They basically uh, pull back out to reset themselves for approaching this fire. And again, I, I can't talk about the fact that they have not been able to get water on this fire in this entire period of time. At 940, the Bonham Richard crew is ordered to abandon ship. And the reason they abandon ship is because smoke is beginning to fill up the hangar deck. And one of the things that they're beginning to see here is that they're losing a lot of visibility and more importantly, uh, the ability to breathe in clear air. There's a good image of, of what you're beginning to see at this point, uh, the smoke here, you see crews, this is the NWUs that they were wearing. These guys love to wear air packs with no protective equipment on, just air breathers. I don't understand why they do that. And then here you see elements of San Diego fire. This is that, that side port access. This is a little bit later in the fire and you're seeing the amount of black smoke. You can see this firefighter down on his knees here, the smoke billowing out. This is getting into a dangerous position here. And one of the things we're gonna see is a decision is gonna to have to be made. So with the crew ordered to abandon ship, there's also another decision made, and that is to secure shore power. And at 0944, power secured, which means what elements you had on board the ship in terms of fire pumps are now gone. So you're going, the ship now becomes a dead ship. There's no way to, number one, use any of the ship's firefighting capabilities at all. And not just the fire hoses, but the AFFF stations, which I'll talk about in a minute, are also now out of service. I should also mention the pumps are out so that when you start spraying water into the ship throughout the next couple of days, there's no way to get water off the ship. And it's at this point that we start seeing the San Diego Fire Department start to descend into the lower V deck to actually get down into the fire deck. At 9.51, the San Diego Fire Department enters the lower V-deck, they find fire, and they start fighting it. They put the first water on this fire. And again, this is, nine, this is an hour and 51 minutes. You're talking about that if you go from the initial report in, we, we are, again, 
looking at a period of time where over 100 minutes pass uh, until you're getting fire on, water on this fire. And by this point, it, it's out of control, I would argue. And again, it doesn't matter if this was an arson, if it was a lithium battery, if it was spontaneous combustion, this fire could have been extinguished quickly and readily had you had a team able to get down there quick and put that fire out. But instead, we're an hour and a half into this fire, over an hour and a half into this fire, and you're just getting water on the fire now. At 954, Fed Fire terminates their attacks from the aircraft elevator, while the San Diego Fire Department initiates a continuous attack. They send in multiple teams in at this point, one on the lower V to extinguish, one on the upper V to try to control the spread of the fire. So finally, you're getting a bite on this fire. And it's not Fed Fire. It's not the Bonhomme Richards team. It's the San Diego Fire Department that is getting this fire and hitting it at this point. It's at 10.05 that the San Diego Harbor Police boats arrive on scene. I'm going to come back to this when I talk about my tugboats and my fire boats. But San Diego fire boats arrive on scene. Now, understand, these fire boats are I, I, I'm, and I'm not going to be mean to San Diego Harbor Police. They do a great job. And these boats are 36 feet long. They're designed to fight yacht fires. They're not designed to fight a fire alongside a helicopter assault ship. These are the San Diego Harbor Police boats. Again, they're throwing, you know, twin monitors uh, of water up on the vessel. But, I mean, they're barely reaching up to the hangar deck. And these are not fireboats for a major vessel fire. I'm sorry. Again, I, we're going to define what a fireboat is. This is designed for smaller vessels that have fires. They come in and dump it. But when you have an 800 plus foot long vessel on fire at this point, this is not what you need. And oh, by the way, again, they're just showing up at this point two hours into the fire two hours into the fire, they're arriving. And again, I don't blame them. It depends on when they got the call to come. All right, so San Diego Harbor Police are on scene. It's 10.05. And now there are issues realizing that this fire is getting out of control. And there's a decision made to see if they could uh, use the ship's AFFF system. Now, AFFF, aqueous film forming foam, is basically uh, that, that kind of big, huge, soapy, fuzzy stuff, which actually stinks and smells. It used to be made of animal fat. Now it's a synthetic agent, which has been found to cause cancer in some people. But on board the vessel, in the hangar deck and on the vehicle decks, there are systems in place that if you hit a button, it rains sprinklers with foam down on the area. The report says these were never activated, and it's not exactly clear if they were fully in operation at this time, which again goes back to the damage control teams and the damage control uh, leader. Why is it you don't know if your AFFF system is working or not? And oh, by the way, why was this not used very in the first bit? The buttons were never pushed. They, they could be triggered remotely. They could be triggered on scene. And now they're planning to go in to use it. The problem with this for me is the power's off. There's no way to use a triple F without power. You don't have the fire pumps. You don't have the ability to use it yet. In the report, it talks about the fact that between 1015 and 1037, there are plans to align the a triple F system. At 1035, the San Diego fire department, who's now been fighting this fire for 30 minutes, again, go back 954, they start fighting this fire. 30 minutes into this fire, they say the upper V is about to blast. And this is a smoke explosion. Sorry. Sorry, Peanut's very sensitive to smoke blasts. So what you're about to see is a smoke explosion. So a no, most structures, what you would want to do as heat builds up is you would want to vent the roof and vent the structure to get the heat out of the building. And the problem with Bonham Richard is, number one, one of the things that they had done to the vessel was put a new deck on the flight deck, and particularly aft where the F-35 Lightnings land. They put a really big heat-resistant area on that flight deck. Heat resistance from the blast of the F-35s blowing down. Well, if it's heat-resistant for F-35s blowing down, it's heat-resistant going up. And so the hangar deck is cooking at this point. It's holding all that heat in, and it's holding smoke in. And smoke is incomplete combustion. 
And all you're going to need is a burst of fresh air in there and you're going to get combustion. And more importantly, you get the explosion, a smoke explosion. Some people will call this a backdraft. Some of these call this an overflash. But basically what San Diego Fire Department says is we got to back out. This thing is going to go. And so at 1035, they announce it is about to blast. And what they do is they initiate at 1037 an evacuation. So on my YouTube cha channel and, and the folder under Bonham Richard, which again, I'll have right up here for you. You can take a look at, I've got videos from the day and this is one of the videos and, and it's showing the arrival of firefighting teams from throughout the base arriving here with gear and equipment suiting up. But more importantly, it shows the moment of the evacuation. Yeah, go ahead and let this run a little bit for you. Okay, I gotta say one thing about this. So these are firefighting crews from a variety of different vessels that are being kitted out and outfitted to go help fight the fire on board Bonhomme Richard, which is great, exactly what you want. No firefighter in his right mind puts that mask on until the last second before they go into a fire. Because number one, it's claustrophobic as anything. Number two, it, it's hard to breathe without going onto air. With it, you start fogging up your mask, perspiration and everything like that. Uh, you just wouldn't do that. You, you would wait till you get there and then you mask up at the last minute to go in until you're in compromised air. You're out here in fresh air. There's no reason to do that. So these guys are kidding up way too early, in my opinion. It's good to have the gear on, have the back air pack on, have your helmet, have all that stuff ready to go. But just don't put your face mask on. You can see the heavy smoke coming off on the shard at this point. You can also see right here, these are the large diameter hoses, those yellow hoses back there. That's what they're hooking into hydrants, heading down the pier to provide water for the engine from Fed Fire and from San Diego Fire. At least two, if not three of them, it looks like they're hauled up. I'm really interested to see what hydrants they're hooked into. Uh, it, it, it's fine to go. You have to hook into different hydrants, but it's not just different hydrants. You have to hook into different water systems. If you're all on that same pipe and if it doesn't big enough, you're, you're not getting enough water. That horn blowing, that's the signal to abandon ship. That's the signal to evacuate the vessel. That, that is coming from the fire trucks. Understand, that's not the vessel, it's the fire trucks. That's the fire department signal to get out of the structure. And a couple of things you'll notice is they have the tower up. They're spraying water from the tower on the structure. At this point, heavy black smoke coming off the vessel at this point, indicating she's ready to go. So that indicates the moment when they announce the evacuation. All right, and that brings us to our last moment here, which is the event that eventually leads us into uh, the fire. And 1050, 1037, they announce the evacuation. And then just 13 minutes later, you get the explosion. And the explosion is the trigger here that really marks the end of the successful attempt to fight this fire. After this point, it literally becomes just merely a salvage operation. They are not going to be able to do much at this point. Uh, the vessel is abandoned at this point, and now the issue becomes really what is the next course. So that's the timeline for the fire. I just want to add one other thing here, and that is at 1110, word goes out, from the port requesting tugs to head toward the vessel to help fight the fire. And that is the arrival of the sea tractors that you see there, the four sea tractor tugs. They had been used up to this point to help move Fitzgerald and Russell off the pier, but then they arrived to help fight the fire. Be sure to tune in for our final episode on the Bonhomme Richard fire investigation, part two analysis, and commentary. If you hadn't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so be alerted about new videos as they come out. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and share it across social media. And also be sure to contribute to our Patreon page that helps support the channel and bring videos like this to you. 
Until the next video, this is Sal, signing off.